Welcome to part three of building a basic penetration testing lab. In this one, we're going to install Kali Linux. The first thing we need to do is go to Kali.org. Then we're going to go to Downloads and click on Download Kali Linux. You're going to pick the one based on your operating system. Mine happens to be a 64-bit, so I'm going to select the ISO for the 64-bit. If you have a 32-bit machine like a netbook, you're going to want to use the 32-bit one. Notice these files are large, 3.1 gigabytes to 3.2 gigabytes, and the current version as of today is version 2.0. When you click on the ISO, it will download that disk image file. Notice mine downloaded to my downloads folder, Kali Linux 2.0 AMD64.ISO. Next, I'm going to open up VirtualBox and I'm going to click on New to create a new virtual machine. I'm going to name it Kali 2.0. It's a Linux type machine and it's based on Debian and mine is 64 bit. Next, click Continue. For our RAM, we want to give it a usable size, so I'm going to use 1024 to keep this as a minimal machine. Next, we're going to set up our hard disk. You're going to select the hard disk as a virtual disk. You're going to use the VDI format, and we're going to use dynamic allocation. That means that we're going to have a single file that will hold our hard drive, and it will be set up as a small file at first, and it will grow up to the maximum size that we give it for the hard disk. This is instead of fixed. If we use fixed and I choose like a 30 gigabyte disk, it's going to immediately allocate 30 gigabytes of your hard disk to this virtual machine. Instead, I can now do dynamic and it will use one or two gigabytes to start with and it will grow over time. On the next screen we'll give it the amount of space we want for our hard disk. For my use we're going to use 30 gigabytes. That will give us plenty of room to use for this machine to add other features. And then click create. Now we're going to end up starting up our Kali box. Notice that our Kali box is a Debian 64 bit operating system. It has one gigabyte of memory. It has a simulated floppy disk, optical disk, and hard disk. It does support virtualization. It has 12 megabytes dedicated to the video rip memory that's being simulated here. Notice that my optical drive is empty and I do have a hard drive of 30 gigabytes assigned. We're going to add a virtual disk that we downloaded, that ISO file, to this optical drive to act as if it was a DVD in the disk drive. To do that, click on optical drive and choose disk image. Browse to your downloads folder and then select the ISO file Kali Linux 2.0 AMD64.ISO. It is now loaded as you can see and we're going to start the virtual machine. As the virtual machine boots, you're going to get to the boot menu screen. When you click in the box, it's going to ask if you wish to capture the mouse, say yes. Once you're at this boot menu, you need to select the graphical installation. At this point, the Kali machine is going to boot from the virtual disk that we have, that DVD, we are going to select English as our language, United States as our country, and American English as our keyboard. It's now going to go through and scan through as it's loading all the additional components needed to do the installation. This will take longer in your machine. I have this going through fast forward at this point. Next it detects our network hardware and it's going to configure that network using DHCP. Next we're going to give it a host name. I'm going to keep the default of Kali. Next we're going to give it a domain. In our case we're not using a domain environment so we'll just hit continue. At this point we need to give a root password to this machine. Root is like the administrator account on Windows. I'm going to use T-O-O-R which is root spelled backwards which is the default for Kali and click continue. Next we'll click on Eastern Time where I am located. Next, the disks are going to be partitioned. We're going to use the guided setup. We're going to choose SCSI 1, which is our virtual disk, which is known as SDA. And as you can see, it is just over 30 gigabytes in space. Next, we're going to select all files in one partition for a common setup. And then we're going to hit finish partitioning and write changes to desk and click continue. Now at this point we have to select yes or no to write these changes and we do want to write these changes so we can continue with the installation. So we'll click yes. At this point the data is going to be copying to your disk. On my system this took about 20 minutes. I have this sped up 20 times the speed so you don't have to wait as long watching through this process. Next we're going to choose continue on using the network mirror and if you are behind a corporate firewall you'll have to enter your proxy information. For most of us this is not the case so we'll just hit continue and leave it blank. At this point the software is going to download the updates from the mirror server on the network 
so that it can get the latest security patches and updates. And then it's going to install the Grub bootloader, which will allow us to boot this operating system once we reboot the computer. It's going to ask if we wish to install it. We're going to say yes. And now we need to select the hard disk that we're using to install Kali on. In our case, that's slash dev slash SDA, which is the first hard disk in this virtual machine and the only hard disk in this virtual machine. So arrow down to that and click continue. As we continue the installation, again, I've sped this up for your video purposes. Once it's done, we're going to hit continue. And now the system is going to reboot itself into Kali Linux. When you get to the menu, you'll select the first option, which is Kali. Your username again is root. Your password, I set mine to Tor. On your first boot, this black screen can take a little while. I'm going to enter full screen to make this a little easier to see. And now at this point, we're done with this machine, so we're going to shut it down by clicking the power button and clicking power off. So at this point, we have downloaded Kali Linux and installed Kali Linux in a virtual machine, and it is ready for us to use in our penetration testing. But first, we have to have some targets. So we're going to move into the next video and install Metasploitable.